Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this tutorial I will teach you how to create custom widgets, these widgets can be reused just like we do with Qt Quick using QML files, with the difference that we can do all of this directly within Python. This video is part of a video related to Pi Dracula, however you can reuse this custom widget in any project you want as I will teach in the second video. Before we start if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and leave your like. Let's start by creating a folder called Circular Progress Bar and inside it open VS Code. Create a folder called Circular Progress and a file called MainPy. Inside this folder create a file called Circular Progress Pi and another with the name in it to start our module. Inside the main file, write the following code. This code is nothing more than a simple blank window where we will import our custom widget into it. For this project, I am using PySide 6, you can also use PySide 2 or PyQt5. The parameter cell free size is only to define the width and height of the window when started. Within the circular progress file, we can copy the same PySide 6 modules from the main Py file. After that create a class called circular progress that will receive the class Q widget. This done within the init file import this class that we just created. The init file is responsible for saying that this folder is a module. After that inside the file circular progress create a method to start the class and create the parameters as shown in the video. These parameters will be responsible for setting functions of our progress bar, such as its value, width, height, color and other settings. It will work like custom properties within Qt Quick using QML files. During the video you will understand these parameters better. After that we will use the self resize parameter, because if we are not going to use this widget inside a layout it will already have its width and height defined by default. We are going to create a function called paint event, it must contain this exact name, because it is a standard Qt event reposable for rendering our widget. Inside the file main pi we will create a queue frame that will be the container of our layout with a dark background color, and also a queue vertical box layout, where we will add our widgets. That done, we can now import our module that contains our circular progress bar which we will soon configure. After that, add the self progress in the self layout using the add widget function as central and vertical central alignment. And add the self layout to our container. That done we added a set central widget that will contain our container. When running our application we see our container filling the entire area of the application which we can change the color if we want. Below self progress we will create a slider, this slider will only be used to change the values of our circular progress. Add the range from 0 to 100. In self layout add slider that we just created, also with central alignment. When we run our application we can see the slider already applied. After that we will start to write our widget. Create a variable called width that will have the width of our widget minus the width of the line in the progress bar, do the same for the variable height. Margin will contain self progress width divided by 2. In value, it will have self value, multiplied by 360 degrees and divided by max value. 
This will link the angle of the progress bar with its value. After that, create a Q Painter. This class allows us to make low-level paintings using codes to draw arcs, circles, rectangles, line, among others. Also add the parameter set rendering hint as anti-aliasing to smooth the edges during rendering. We are going to create a rectangle that will contain the same width and width as our widget and also remove its border using QT No Pen. Our Q painter must always be closed with the end function. In progress, we will set the minimum width and height using the parameters we wrote inside our widget. Nothing will appear yet because we still need to create the arc and text for our widget. In rectangle we don't use any pen, but now we are going to create one. This pen is responsible for the color, width and style of the progress bar. Once this is done, we will create the arc of the progress bar. Let's start by setting our pen to the painter and drawing our arc that will receive the margins, width and height that we created. The initial angle will be minus 90 multiplied by 16 because the 360 degrees angle in QT arc is represented by the value 5760. At a final angle, we put the value as negative, also multiplied by 16. When running our application we do not see anything because we need to set an initial value, in which case I will put 50. See that we can now view our progress bar with a value of 50%. This is because in the widget we are converting the angle value from 360 degrees to a percentage ranging from 0 to 100 as defined in max value. The margin value is responsible for dynamically compensating the position on our widget. Now if we remove the above parameters, we see that the size of the widget is also affected. Using this calculation we also fix this problem dynamically. Having explained this, we will create the text of our widget that will be aligned based on the rectangle that we created previously, and we will centralize it. Start by changing the color of the pen to the text color parameter. This text will receive the value and also the suffix that we defined above. See that our text was created correctly. We can also remove the alignment parameter for educational purposes only and show how it would look without it. We can also change the suffix just to make a test. Change this value directly in the main file.
finally add the last parameter before creating the drop shadow function for our widget. This parameter will be used to define the font family and also its size. We can also do a test with this new function that we just added. In this part of the video I had a problem. For some reason the video is corrupting. I had to re-record that part of the video again, and I forgot to explain that I had removed the standard title bar. So before continuing, go to the main.py file and add the parameters set windows flags and set attribute as shown in the print below. Continuing, it is in this part that we will create a function that will be connected to the signal of the slider to change the values of the progress bar. Create a function called setValue, with an extra parameter called value, which will change the value of the variable self value. In slider connect the event value change to this new function that we will create, called changeValue. This function will pass the slider value to our progress bar as a signal where the set value function will be connected in a circular progress file. Recapping. We will connect the slider to the change value function that will send the slider value to the set value function in a circular progress file that will change the value in real time, but it still won't work correctly. When running our application, we have updated values, but they are not updated in the user interface. For this to work perfectly we need to add a new function called repaint. This function will render our widget whenever the setValue function is called. See that after doing this we have everything working correctly. And if we change the parameters like the progress rounded cap everything will work correctly. And to finish our widget we will add the shadow function to it. We will make a change, we will remove the parameter enable shadow, and we will create it as a function. This function will check if our shadow is enabled and applied. For those who want to know more details I teach in the video custom title bar, I will leave in the card above where we will use the Q graphics drop shadow effect to generate shadows. We will run our application without the shadow applied and then we will apply. Enable this function in the main pi file and see how it will look. We have the shadow displayed correctly, you can change the opacity of the shadow to smaller values. That done we finished another tutorial. I would like to thank all the subscribers of the channel, thanks to you and all the supporters of Patreon, with your help I can record content like this and create projects like Pi Dracula to help the community. In the next video, I will teach you how to integrate this circular progress bar project in real life, where we will apply it on a modern splash screen that we will do for Pi Dracula. Reminding you that the source code for this project is available to all Patreon supporters. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and leave your like. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.